I'm so excited for you to join me for this gorgeous shawl today. And we will be using the Stroll Mini Pack in Fingering Weight. You'll need two packs for this shawl. And I love Stroll. It's such a squishy yarn. I've loved working with it. So these packs are great and they come in other colors as well. Now you will need a yarn winder in order to work these hanks. If you don't have one, you can pick one up on the We Crochet site or you can enlist someone in your house to hold it open while you wind it or place it on the back of a chair and wind around it. And then what you will also need today in order to do this shawl is a seven millimeter crochet hook and you can use any brand you like. Two stitch markers are necessary for saving you grief and marking the edges of each row. Go ahead and be sure to grab those. You'll also want a yarn needle and some scissors. And so let's go ahead and jump right into this project. Now how the shawl is made is we are going to be using the Suzette stitch on the bias. So that means we're going to be working from one corner and then to the other corner the way that it's worked in rows. So our rows are not like this. Our rows are actually like this. We can follow a row all the way across this way. So that's how we will work it to make this gorgeous design. So we're just going to start from one corner where we're doing some increasing for that Suzette stitch. And then once we get to the width we want, we will just simply work that in pattern on the bias. And then on the other side, of course, we will do some decreasing on the bias to get it right back to where um, we want it to match the other side in shape. So it's one long rectangle, but we're working it in a diagonal on the bias way. Now in the pattern, it will tell you when to change colors, what row you want to change colors. You can mark each side of the row if you want to keep track of where you are. And then it will tell you when to change to a different color and back again into a different color. Um, you can fasten off your yarn or you'll notice if you look really closely here, I actually carried my yarn up the side when I didn't have a long stretch of color when I was just going every other row. That way it makes a little bit faster and less ends to weave in, but you can do it how you like. When I have really big sections, I tend to fasten off and then reattach the yarn, especially in like this area. Now crocheting it on the bias will create us such a unique and fantastic look for a shawl that we will want to wear all the time. So let's get started. Now on camera, I'm going to be using a uh, darker color of yarn so we can see this in a worsted weight with a larger hook, just so we can see what we're doing on camera. But um, obviously for the stroll, it's a different hook size as well as um, yarn size. So we're going to start by doing a chain two. So create a slip knot. Place that onto your hook and then chain two. Now working from the second chain from the hook, so the second chain, we're going to do a stack single crochet. So we're going to enter into that second chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Then we're going to go right back into that left bar. This is how we do that stacked single crochet yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Now that is our very, very first stitch. We haven't done two stitches there. We've only done one. That is a stacked single crochet. I'm going to go ahead and grab a stitch marker. A little bit of a smaller stitch marker for this. And I'm going to mark that stitch, especially in the first rows, you'll want to mark the top of that stacked single crochet because um, sometimes it's kind of hard to see. And then we're going to do in the same space, we're going to do a single crochet and then a double crochet. And we're going to do that twice. So once again, I'm going to do a single crochet. This is all in the same stitch and a double crochet. And now I'm going to turn. So I have a total of five stitches for row two. Row one was our chains. And now it's time for us to, to turn and work row three. So now we're going to turn for row three and we're going to do a stack single crochet right into that very first stitch. When we work our stack single crochets, there's no need to do chain stitches when starting our row. We're going to insert our hook right into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, go right through that left bar there, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And we definitely want to go ahead and mark this stitch as well for row three. And now we're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet into the very next stitch. So we'll single crochet and double crochet into the very next stitch. Then we're going to skip the next uh, double crochet stitch 
and we will single crochet and double crochet into the next stitch. So with the Suzette stitch, we're doing a lot of skipping and then working two stitches into one stitch, and that's what creates that beautiful design. Now in the last, I'm going to move my stitch marker and we are going to single crochet and double crochet into that last stitch of this row. And now we have seven stitches and you can see how this is creating a nice corner here. We're working diagonally. So the point of our work will always be facing down as we're working it. And now we're ready to turn for row four. So row four, very similar here. Um, this is gonna be our repeat from here on out. This is what I love about this stitch. It is very simple to do. So for row four, we are going to do a stacked single crochet into the very first stitch. And then we're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next stitch. And here's our repeat. We're gonna skip the next double crochet and do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next stitch. And we repeat that until the very last stitch. So we'll skip the next stitch and do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next stitch. And now that we are at our very last stitch, we will do, and we're gonna move that stitch marker and we will do a single crochet and a double crochet into that last stitch. Now here's the cool thing. I know we just got started. We just completed um, row four and no, I did not mark the first stitch in my row. And I definitely should have, um, but we have a total at this point of row four of nine stitches. So you just count across that so you have, you have a total of nine stitches. Um, and now for rows five through 24, yes, five through 24, you're gonna repeat row four and then you'll start changing colors. So row 25, row 27, row 29, we're just gonna change colors. However, everything we are doing um, for a while is just increasing. So this is increasing on the bias for the Suzette stitch. We're simply repeating row four while also doing some color changes and increasing on the bias. Now I want to show you the next row five, just because we're repeating row four for a while. I want to get a solid base of this, but every time we do an increase, we are simply increasing by two. So I'm going to turn my work and we'll do a stacked single crochet into that very first stitch and go ahead and mark that first stitch. And now we're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're gonna skip the next stitch, which will be a double crochet stitch, and we'll do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. So we're working the Suzette stitch into the single crochet stitches from the row below. We'll skip the next and single crochet and double crochet. And we'll skip the next and single crochet and double crochet. And then when you get to the very last stitch of the row, you can move your stitch marker and we will be doing a single crochet and a double crochet into that very last stitch. And then we can go ahead and turn our work. You notice this triangle is getting bigger. We'll start the next row with a stack single crochet, placing our stitch marker. And then we're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. Skip the next single crochet and double crochet and repeat that across until the last stitch and we'll do a single crochet and a double crochet into the last stitch of the row. So I'm going to work this for a couple more rows so that I have a big enough sample here for you to see how to do that Suzette stitch. Um, it's great for making washcloths too. It's really, really quick. It's fun to do it on the bias. And um, then once you get to the part where you're no longer needing to do an increase, we'll talk about how to do the rows that are not increasing or decreasing. We're just working the same amount of stitches for a while. All right, so once you get to the center part of the shawl where we do not want to do any more increasing or decreasing, this is where we will be changing. And this will happen for you on row 33 if you're following the instructions of the shawl. But once again, you can make this as um, 
big or as little as you would like. But once we get to this part, you will be changing colors a lot, but I just wanna show you that we're just repeating rows 33 and 34 from the pattern. So this two row repeat for um, working this without making and making it any bigger, we wanna keep it in the shape. So to do that for row 33, where we start doing this for the center of the shawl, we will start with doing a stacked single crochet into the first stitch and then marking it. Then we're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next stitch. And then we'll skip the next double crochet and do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next stitch. And we are going to work this until we get to the last um, three stitches in this row. All right, so now we have worked and we have three stitches left in this row. And what we will be doing is doing a slip stitch to the last stitch and turning. So, yep, I'm going to move my stitch marker. I have three stitches left. We're going to go right into that very last stitch and do a slip stitch. And then we are going to turn our work. And here we are at row 34 where we do a stacked single crochet into the very first stitch. And that will be in that slip stitch. And then we're going to skip the next stitch and do a single crochet and a double crochet. And you want to make sure that you mark the very first stitch in this row. Stitch markers are kind of key for this one because it's so easy to work a stitch on the side um, where you don't want to. And now we're going to skip the next stitch and do a single crochet and a double crochet. And we'll work that by skipping the next stitch and a single crochet and a double crochet. And we're going to do this all the way until the last stitch. So now that I have worked the Suzette stitch across, I have one stitch left here, and I'm going to move my stitch marker. And in the very last stitch for row 34, we are going to do a single crochet and a double crochet. Now we um, had 64 stitches on the last row because of the slip stitch and now we back to 65 on this row. So your stitch count will change slightly depending on if you're doing the row 33 repeat or the row 34 repeat. But this is where you can kind of start to see here. This side, once we started right here, um, we are going flat. So this side will kind of be flat, this side will be flat, and we're just gonna keep working it this way. So I want to show you one more time how to repeat those two rows, the row 33 and the row 34, um, without doing any increasing. So we're just going in pattern here uh, for the center of the shawl. So we will start that, this will be row 33 again, by doing the stacked single crochet. Because for a lot of these rows, we're going to be repeating rows 33 and 34 for now while we also change colors. But I'm going to mark this first stitch and in the very next stitch I'm going to do a single crochet and a double crochet. Skip the next stitch and do a single crochet and a double crochet and we're going to repeat that across until we get to the last three stitches of this row. All right, so now that I am at the last three stitches of row 33, I'm going to skip these two stitches and in the very last stitch where my stitch marker currently is, we are going to do a slip stitch and turn our work. And now we're ready for the row 34 repeat, which this one we will start by doing a stacked single crochet into that slip stitch and we'll wanna mark that stitch as well. 
And so on row 33, we ended with 64 stitches. On row 34, we end with 65 stitches every single time we repeat those. Now we're going to skip the next stitch. And in the next, we are going to do a single crochet and a double crochet. And then we'll skip the next stitch, that double crochet stitch, and we'll do a single crochet and a double crochet. And we're going to repeat that all the way across until we get to the very last stitch. And now that we are coming to that very last stitch, we're going to move this stitch marker. And in the very last stitch of this row, we're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet. And we're back to 65 stitches on row 34 for that repeat. And we can see even more now, take this out here, how one edge of our, our um, swatch here is growing. So especially once we've like kind of blocked this out just slightly, but we're just maintaining this side going straight up and this side going straight up together, keeping that diagonal balance. So repeat that for your shawl to create the centers with all those stripings. And then next we're going to talk about uh, decreasing on the bias. So now once you've worked your shawl to the point where we're going to decrease, you can tell we're essentially just going to fill in this triangle here, this triangle area that's left, and that way it'll make it into a rectangle. So when you start decreasing, that will begin on row 127. To do 127, we're going to start by doing a stack single crochet into the very first stitch. And of course, we are going to mark that stitch to make life easier. Now we're going to skip the next um, single crochet and double crochet stitch. And then we will single crochet and double crochet into the next. And we'll skip the next double and single crochet and double crochet into the next. And then we'll work that repeat all the way across until we get to the last three stitches. And now that we are to these last three stitches, we're going to skip the next double crochet and single crochet. So we're gonna skip the next two stitches and where our stitch marker is, we are going to do a single crochet and a double crochet, and then we're ready to turn our work. For row 128, we are going to do a stack single crochet into the first. And when we decrease, every single row will decrease by two stitches. We're going to skip the next single crochet and double crochet. And then we are going to do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. And then that will follow our pattern, skipping a double crochet and then doing a single crochet and a double crochet into the next single crochet stitch. And we'll repeat that across until we get to the last three stitches. So now that I'm at the last three stitches, I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch marker. We're going to skip this double crochet and single crochet. And in the last one, we will do a single crochet and a double crochet. And then we're going to turn our work and we'll repeat the rows 127 until we get to the end. And you still will be changing colors while you're decreasing. So be conscious of that. We'll start by doing a stacked single crochet into the first. Skip the next single and double crochet stitches. Do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. And I want to make sure I go back before I forget. I want to mark that very first stack single crochet of that row. Then we are going to do, we're going to skip the next double crochet and we'll do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next, working that across until we get to the last three stitches, which will become faster and faster because each row is going to get less and less. We're going to skip the double crochet and the single crochet stitch 
and we will do a single crochet and a double crochet into the last and turn our work. Just remember as you're doing this, you'll probably be doing some color changes as well. And you can always carry those up the side. I have done a stack single crochet into the first. I'm going to skip the next single crochet and double crochet and do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. Skip the next double crochet and do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. And at the last three stitches, we are going to do a single crochet and a double crochet into the very last. We can see how this is really starting to decrease to make it the same as this side down here and more of a rectangle. So once again, we are going to be repeating row 127 until we have finished off all the stitches. So I'm going to do a stacked single crochet into the first, marking that stitch. And then we're going to skip the next single crochet and double crochet and do a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. And notice now I'm at the last three stitches of my row already. So I'll simply move that stitch marker and do a single crochet and a double crochet into the last. And then turn my work. We'll start this one with a single crochet and a double crochet. We will skip the next uh, single crochet and double crochet. But then at that point, we also are at the last stitches of this row. So when you work the very last row, you'll start, but then you're just simply going to do um, not any center work. We're starting our row. We're gonna, then we're just gonna go straight to the end of our row and do a single crochet and a double crochet because that's how it works out. And then we're going to turn, and for the very last row, we are going to slip stitch this. So we, if we are at row 158, we're just gonna turn and we're gonna slip stitch into the last stitch of this row, which is also, you know, was the first. The first stitch of this row will be the last stitch of this row. We're just gonna turn and do a slip stitch to nicely round off that corner. And now we have a really nice looking uh, rectangle style shawl, but, and it looks so great when you block out this stitch, but this is made on the bias. So it's uh, really, really fun to wear, really, really fun to make up a little bit of doing a traditional shape, but in a non-traditional style by working it on the bias. I really hope you enjoy creating this beautiful Suzette stitch on the bias for the shawl. And you can also use this as a stash buster if you've got a lot of colors around. This is a fun one just to make it up that way. As you have scraps, you could just do another row and, and make it as a stash buster. You can also do this as a temperature shawl. So you could do um, you know different rows for different temperatures of the day. It's a really fun one for that as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow me for more fun projects soon.